Uh, stocks, meanwhile, lower to start the shortened trading week here to share her outlook on the market and where she sees opportunity. Lisa Shallot, Morgan Stanley Wealth Management's chief investment officer. Lisa, I wonder, first of all, the, the role of bellwethers in this market. We can look over uh, at Palo Alto Networks now down close to 14 percent in overtime. Uh, NVIDIA reports tomorrow. What kind of an impact are stocks like that having on uh, valuations and sentiment? Well, I, I think we have to separate, you know, the index from uh, the average stock, right? So one of the points that we've been making for a long time is that the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index. We know it's been super concentrated in those mag seven, including companies uh, like NVIDIA. And that index uh, is extraordinarily sensitive to those uh, uh, cohorts, and it's extraordinarily sensitive to interest rates. On the flip side, uh, we've got the average company is much more fairly valued. Uh, and so I think that the read across uh, for, you know, things like NVIDIA, which has been a very idiosyncratic story, uh, is actually quite low for the broad, uh, you know, fraction of the market. So th does that mean you're more paying attention to equal weighted uh, indexes versus the broader index, given the, the heavy influence and increasingly heavy influence that the large names have or no? Yeah, 100 percent. We're looking at the other 493 names. And as I noted, they're fairly valued. Uh, our best guess is that many of those companies uh, are going to have the opportunity if, in fact, uh, the economy stays robust, if, in fact, the Fed begins to cut rates in the second half, uh, to see some of their fundamentals reaccelerate. And that's really not uh, built into their current stock prices, whereas, you know, some of the uh, MAG-7 certainly have ebullient expectations associated with them already. So from micro to macro, I mean, the U.S. economic growth, it's been so strong, so much stronger than everybody expected. How real is the risk that this is going to reignite or at least entrench inflation above 2 percent and push off or delay the Fed's ability to cut rates? And I ask that knowing that we've just seen a number of reports that showed um, a little more inflationary pressure than the market was hoping for. Yeah, so as you may know, Morgan Stanley's been in the camp that uh, that the inflation uh, trajectory is going to be quite lumpy uh, and that this idea that we were going to rapidly uh, get to the 2 percent target, that we were rapidly going to see six or seven Fed rate cuts was probably overly optimistic. And so our best guess is that you have to understand that if the economy is resilient, if unemployment uh, is uh, kind of anchored near 50-year lows, if wage growth is going to continue to hover between 4 and 5 percent, that the potential for inflation, especially if fiscal spending continues at the rate that it's been going, uh, that inflation may be with us for quite a while longer, and the Fed is going to have to be patient. Is the U.S. still the place to put your money to work right now, or are there other markets that are compelling? Uh, we've been in the camp that says, uh, in addition to the 493 names uh, below, you know, the, the, the top decile of the index, uh, that there are some interesting plays outside the United States, given uh, that valuations there are much better uh, and it looks like they're at a different point in their economic cycle. So our best guess is that emerging markets uh, actually rebound into the second half of the year. It may be that European stocks that have proven pretty resilient here uh, to start the year uh, are going to benefit from an ECB that gets their rate cutting uh, program going by the middle of the year. And Japan is really, uh, we believe, in the mid, mid innings uh, of a new bull market uh, that's really been associated with the revaluation of the Japanese yen okay. uh, and the restructuring uh, of their focus on shareholder value. So if you had to give us uh, two or three specific countries, then uh, you mentioned Japan, but uh, outside of just broad emerging markets, what would you say? We'd be in Brazil, Mexico and India right now.